This video is a comparison of the two different power brake units that came on 1958 Cadillacs. There's the Bendix and the Delco Moraine. This one is a Delco Moraine. Um, one thing they have in common is they mount exactly the same way. There's four bolts, one at each corner, and the brake line goes in the same spot. Um, so the installation and removal is the same. To remove either power brake, you just have to pull out the little cotter pin from the clevis pin and pull the clevis pin out. And that separates the power brake unit from the from the pedal lever. To put it back together you just have to slide them back together push the clevis pin back through and uh, reinstall the cotter pin so the full removal is just to remove the the cotter pin from the clevis pin remove the clevis pin to disconnect from the brake pedal um, disconnect the fluid line remove the four bolts disconnect the two hoses and then you just lift the unit out. Of course, be careful not to spill brake fluid. I have two uh, old coil springs from the rear of the Cadillac that make nice stands for these units. So we have the Delco Moraine unit on the left and the Bendix unit on the right. They're, they look very similar on the outside, especially the, the booster. You can see some small differences, but they look very similar. They have the same um, pipes coming out and very similar air cleaners. Not exactly the same. Main difference on the outside is the master cylinder on the Delco Moraine is cast iron, while the Bendix is a light alloy. The, the What I look for for the immediate telltale is the, the fill plug on the Bendix is horizontal, whereas the fill plug on the Delco Moraine is at a, about a 45 degree angle. Also, the, the bleeder screws point in opposite directions. Um, this rubber boot on the bottom of the Bendix should also be one on the bottom of the Delco Moraine. I just don't have that one. So they're, they're similar in that respect too. And they hook up identically to the car. And from the top you can see there's a it's basically a triangular shape on both. Another difference is the the bottom plate on the Bendix has these tabs that hold it on whereas the Delco Moraine has screws on the bottom and I greatly prefer the Delco Moraine's screws over the tabs on the Bendix. You also notice the Bendix has this plug here, that's an access plug to one of the internal components of the master cylinder, which the Delco Marine doesn't have, so it doesn't need that. To compare them, we're going to disassemble both units. The Delco Marine unit uh, was successfully tested on the car, although the, the canister has a fair amount of corrosion in it that that could be a problem. The Bendix works as far as the master cylinder works fine. The booster boosts just fine. It doesn't hold properly um, because there's, there's a vacuum leak in there that we'll look at why that's happening. They have similar looking inlets, although when you take them out, you'll find that they're not exactly the same. I'm sorry, outlets, not inlets. Another way they're different is the lubrication port is in a slightly different spot. This is the one on the Bendix. Let's turn this around to the sun. The one on the Bendix is rubber here, and the one on the Delco Moraine is a screw here. I don't know if that's how they were originally, but it's a slight difference now. 
there's only one screw for the act for the um, vacuum pipes for the Bendix. There's two for the Delco Moran. I was recently testing both units, so they both have clean brake fluid. But we're gonna be disassembling them, so it's gonna go away. You can see down in there. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the two air cleaners. The Delco Marine has very ratty old uh, sponge, whereas the Bendix has a sponge is in pretty good shape. It's got this rubber gasket too. Once you get the tabs pried, the uh, the Bendix is easier to take apart, and we'll see why. And the plate's off. Uh, normally you'd have to disconnect the boot from the from the end plate, but that's already off. Um, the only thing keeping the piston from popping out is the fact that the pipe is still going through here and it's blocking it. Once we remove that, the spring inside should push the piston out. You want to be careful about that because it can come out pretty pretty strongly. So I'm going to remove the screw holding the pipes in. I'm going to disconnect the hose from the pipe and then carefully pull the pipe out so the, the uh, piston can come out. Pull the hose off. Easiest way to do it will be to push the piston in slightly, pull the pipe out, and then carefully release pressure on the piston so they can come out. So there we have the Bendix piston. And the spring is here. This is the end of the master cylinder plunger. So the piston pushes that in and then the spring pushes it back out. If this is one area we'll see the Delco Moraine is very different. Notice here is a gasket this with the pipes. I like the one hole pipe better because the two hole pipe is a pain to get the screws lined up. On to the Delco Moraine, it's got its two screws. I think these are not the originals because the originals, when they're in, are uh, flush with the, with the plate and these screws are not able to do that. One is out when you get the other. Uh, this, this is where the boot would be if it had one. We got the end plate off. Now I take the hose off here. And this is loose. And that's because even though the piston operates properly, it doesn't, it gets stuck at this point. So it might take some effort to get it to come out. And it's a much bigger spring. It comes, it tends to come out more forcefully than the Bendix, at least in my experience, since the Bendix is held in by that end plate. Whereas this one can just pop freely out. And it's a little sticky. So I pushed it back in. If I push it farther in, it'll come it'll still come back out, but it may not come all the way out, so I may have to do some further fighting with it. But this is the bottom of the Delco Moraine piston. Now you see these snap rings here. Um, it actually comes with a triangular retaining ring, but this one didn't have it when I got the unit, so I bought some... Uh, one inch snap rings, two of them to approximate the correct thickness. And that's what's holding the, uh, the air valve in. And to get it out, I, I pushed further in and, uh, and pulled to give the spring a little extra boost to get it out. These end pieces thread off, which will make it easier to get the boot off, which I'm going to do to the Bendix. And you can notice that the gaskets and end plates are similar, but not the same. Bendix on the left, and Delco on the right. So here are the two pistons. 
Notice they look very different on top, even though they have a similar hose at the bottom. The biggest difference, at least on the outside here, is the, the master cylinder plunger is part of the booster piston on the Delco and not on the uh, Bendix. So here's the Delco Moraine. Canister with the big spring. You can see that C clip there, which retains the uh, plunger and this end plate. So we'll press down on the spring, then we can push the C, C retainer out easily, and then the whole spring can come out. And there's the C clip out, and the spring's released. And we'll see that. That's the Bendix spring, and that's the Delco spring. Next up, we're going to remove the master cylinders. Uh, one thing I didn't point out was that with the uh, Delco having the plunger as part of the piston, you want the canister downward when you're releasing it, at least downward enough, so that you don't let brake fluid fall out into your uh, onto your piston. Now if you're rebuilding everything that may not be such a big deal but um, if you don't want brake fluid all over everything and then you have to clean everything then make sure you don't do that. With this um, the master cylinder is self-contained and it's already sealed out unless you have a bad seal. Disconnect the masters we just have to remove the three screws and that's the same in both units. Um, Delco Moraine normally has a small piece of metal in there that where the spring sits that apparently is missing on this one. This is from my working Delco Moraine unit. The metal piece at the bottom there, those two bumps, the end of the spring sits between them and the smaller bump sits over top of the of the screw for the lubrication port. Now all we have here is the canister. It still has its rubber plug for the lubrication port. And there's a gasket between the master and the booster, which is still in good shape since I recently rebuilt the master before I knew there was a problem with the booster. On to the Delco Moraine. It's got uh, half inch bolt heads versus 7 sixteenths that the Bendix has. And the Delco Moraine Master Cylinder is separated from the canister. See the bigger hole versus the Bendix. Normally the Delco Moraine would have a gasket there, but... This is the old gasket from before I rebuilt my running Delco Moraine unit. Um, the one that came with the kit to replace that was almost a full triangle, so they aren't necessarily always going to be shaped the same. There is our RTV sealant. Well, there's the two master cylinders. The Delco Moraine has a special tool to remove this end plug, and the Bendix has a snap ring at the end that we'll have to get out. There's also snap ring pliers. This is the special tool. J5794 and it fits there with a half inch drive rent, uh, ratchet to remove it. And there's the end plug. It's got a spacer ring that sits in there. This is the bearing for the plunger. It also has this blue washer. And there's the primary cup. The one other one in the plug is the secondary cup. Secondary cup. And then, I can't remember what this is called. But that's all that's in there. Then the 
secondary cup comes out of the unplug. And there's this washer and another retainer ring which was missing so this is just a ring that's the same size from uh, a hose clamp which seems to work just fine. And then in the bottom we have the vacuum seal and that's it for the end plug. Moving the outlet. It's got a spring in there. It's a residual something to look that up exactly what that is. Washer and spring. Leader screw. Fill plug, and that is a completely disassembled Delco Marine master cylinder. The end plug also has these two O rings. And the Bendix outlet has similar, but not the same. Yeah, removing that front plug from the Bendix. Cover removed, we can see the compensating valve. That valve right now is open, allowing fluid to go between um, the reservoir and where the piston is pushing the fluid out to the wheels with the brakes released. Once we push the plunger in, that valve will close. And now fluid can't go through there so that when you're applying the brakes, the reservoir is not pumping fluid into the reservoir. Very different than how the Delco Marine does it. The Delco Marine has, has small holes at the end of the uh, plunger, which get blocked by the primary seal when the brakes are being applied to accomplish the same thing. Compensating valve removed, you can see that it's open like this. And you can see inside the the master cylinder where the ridge on the base of the plunger pulls the, the um, stem of the compensating valve. Next going to remove the reservoir cover and the cover has a gasket. Okay, so we're going to pull the O-ring out, and then the, the manual says to push the plunger all the way in and then pull it out, and that'll pull the vacuum seal out. Well, what the manual said to do didn't work, so uh, gently pried the outside of the So you can see the snap ring in there. So the snap ring comes out, and then the rest of the parts should come out. Snap ring out, and everything else should just pull right out. Metal washer. Other washer. Rubber seal, bearing, and plunger. So here's our master cylinder housing. Everything taken off of it. Next thing to do is wash the parts in alcohol. Uh, I'm going to save the, the disassembly of the pistons for later. Unless you're replacing it, there's no real need to take the compensating valve apart. It's got its spring there and this clip, which when you install it, you press these together. And you could pry it apart, but 
I see no real value in doing that since I can get alcohol in there. And it's not that dirty. And it also has this O-ring. You can see how the outlets are different. The threads are different. The length is different. Springs are different. You can see the Bendix and Delco Marine external similarities and differences here. Uh, you'll notice the the outputs are in the same spot. They're both at a triangular-ish base. Uh, the cylinders, you can see the Bendix is a little bit, at least appears on the outside, a little bit uh, bigger bore than the Delco. Their bleeder screws are on opposite sides. The Delco has um, its fill plug at an angle, while the Bendix is has a plate that goes over this and it's horizontal. Um, Delco Marine weighs about four pounds in cast iron, whereas the Bendix is really light, a little over a pound, and is uh, an alloy. This is how you're looking at it on the car. Also see the Bendix is made, or at least Bendix is from South Bend, Indiana. I think that says Brake Products Division. And they call their product Tradelvac. Bendix Tradelvac. The Moraine master cylinder doesn't have anything like that on it. It's got. Uh, It's a casting number. The reservoir and the and the cylinder itself are separated by a compensating valve, which goes in that. The Delco Moraine doesn't have such a valve. You can see the whole which is the passageway from the reservoir over to the cylinder. And again, that's uh, blocked by a seal when the brakes are being applied. When the brakes are released, the plunger is back enough behind the seal so that the holes in the side of the plunger um, allow fluid through. So there's the hole over to the reservoir. First thing I'm going to put back together on the masters is the outlet. They're similar but not the same. The Bendix has a gasket while the Delco has a washer, a copper washer. The Delco also has a rubber gasket there that the Bendix doesn't have. The Delco has a bigger spring and the residual valve, I think they're called, is a little different. And I think the originals aren't exactly like these either, but they function. The springs go in first, followed by the residual valves. They both take a one and a quarter inch socket to tighten. Next up is the sealing mechanism for uh, preventing fluid from traveling between the master cylinder and the reservoir when brakes are being applied. On the Delco Moraine, it's this um, primary cup retainer and primary cup, primary seal. And on the Bendix, we have the compensating valve on the Delco Marine with the seal on. The Bendix has the compensating valve start threading. You can see the O-ring in there. That'll be tightened down with a one and one-eighth 
inch socket. That's tight and down. Put the cover with its O ring on, and that takes a three quarter inch wrench. Going to start disassembling the vacuum pistons. Uh, they each have a large hose. The I think the Delcos is slightly bigger than the Bendix. Notice they go opposite directions around the piston. Um, these bottoms are similar. Maybe you can do the same. Uh, the uh, leather seal is actually the same part on both. One of the few things that are interchangeable. Delco is held on by four large, largish screws, relatively speaking, whereas the Bendix is held on by I think five small screws. The hose may or may not have a clamp. This one did. It doesn't right now. I took that off already. Um, the um, retaining ring here is actually two snap rings. This is the actual retaining ring for the Delco Moraine. It's very easy to remove by prying it out with a screwdriver, but I find it very difficult to reinstall. Have the Retaining ring out, the washer pops out easily. Notice also the black rubber bumper at the bottom, which is actually missing on the unit we're working on, but that's what it looks like. Got the snap rings removed. Uh, I'm going to turn it the other direction, uh, holding on to the rod so that the parts that are internal won't just fall out. So this is what came out. This is um, a bit improvised. I'll explain later why there's all these washers instead of what's normally there. So this is the air valve with its O-ring gasket. This is the this washer's at the end, just just before the snap rings. The spring. And they fit up inside there to operate the booster when applying the brakes. Little holes in the plunger. Fluid is able to pass through those holes when the brakes are released. The base of the Bendix has this boot here and it has this this is one I made from rubber gasket material because the equivalent thing, the correct thing on the Bendix was missing when I acquired it. So I will take this off. This is used RTV sealant, calls for rubber cement in the shop manual. I'll have to pull this up over here carefully so that the other components can come off. The Delco hose is bigger than the Bendix hose. Going to continue disassembling the Delco by removing these four screws. There's springs underneath, so be careful. Removing the last two. After removing the top plate with the plunger, uh, reveals these springs and these levers, which probably will pop out a little bit of their spots when you pull it off, which these, these did. I just put them back for illustration. Um, underneath, I used RTV sealant when I put this together because I didn't have the proper the proper O-ring and it seemed to work just fine that way, at least while using it. When uh, putting this together for real, I'll get the correct O-ring. So I'll take off these six levers. Large spring, larger spring. 
this spring retainer, or I can't remember what it's called, and the other spring. And then I'm going to take the, the leather seal off and put this in a Ziploc bag because I want it to stay, to stay wet with its lubricant. Underneath there we have the felt wick and its retaining ring to figure out exactly where the there it is. Pull this out of the... And these will also go in a Ziploc bag. Uh, it's soaked in the hydraulic fluid used to lubricate the cylinder. All that leaves in there now And that disassembles into these components, which we'll talk about later. This is the floating control valve and its annular rubber seat, which the shop manual treats as one component. The rubber seat isn't shown in the pictures and is only referenced in the verbiage. On my working unit, I reattached it with RTV sealant. This seat is where the airflow through the piston is controlled. Leaving. piston assembly. So that's Delco. Now for Bendix, we next have to take these screws out to remove this cover. And it lifts off. We got this rubber here. And careful of this compensating stem. Next, we'll take this off to remove this pipe. And we'll notice there's an O ring in there. Next, this plate comes off after these six screws. Now, with this plate removed, we get to the retaining ring. for the wick of the Bendix, which looks different than the other, but it's basically the same thing. Now this next plate can come out, revealing the leather seal, which will go in the baggie. The reason I think this was not holding properly, and I think there's a there's a vacuum leak, is that this uh, bottom piece is somewhat warped. It's not doesn't make a true seal. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap there. They actually, when I got it, it actually had three gaskets there. I think someone tried to make it work by using three gaskets and, and maybe it did but I left two screws in there to show it's trying to pop off because there's a spring in there so be careful with that now we can see that spring we'll take the cover off and now we see the Bendix has its diaphragm very very different than the Delco Next, the spring and the gasket. And there's another, this J, J spring. It's there to hold the, that's the vacuum poppet. Yeah. The vacuum poppet to hold it closed when the brakes are released. this mechanism we have to remove these two little clips 
after removing the one from the atmospheric poppet, it comes out. And you notice there's a spring under there. And I think this whole thing can come out, even though the vacuum poppet's still attached. And I don't really see any reason to detach the vacuum poppet. So that's the base of the Bendix piston. Put the J spring screw back in there just to so I wouldn't lose it or get confused by it. Back over on the moraine, delta moraine unit, these separate. This can be separated also by uh, removing a snap ring. I did remove the end plate. I was also going to take this O ring out so then we'll have the um, master cylinder plunger for the Delco Moraine. And I also removed the snap ring from the Bendix. Now, on both, of both units, the rest of this comes apart too, but the manual specifically says unless it's really necessary, don't do that. Here you can see the holes in the moraine plunger, and you can see this little line just above the holes. This bright line, that's where it sits in the primary seal when it's released. This is actually the one that was in my unit that I'm, I've been using, but the spare unit actually had a one that looked in better shape, so I swapped them in, swapped them. The other one doesn't have this color difference. I'm not sure what that's about. I feel a little ridge here. I don't know what that's about either. Um, but it still works just fine. The Bendix plunger doesn't have those holes. This uh, washer, as the manual calls it, is used to pull the end pin on the compensating valve when released. Let's see if we can see approximately where it sits in its seal. Maybe about there. You can see them two plungers side by side here and this is the direct the direction they each go into the cylinders and the uh, compensating valve when released the plunger pulls that to open the valve when applied So the lip of the primary seal sits about here. Apply it, and then the holes appear. Switch sides of the seal. Apply brakes. And there's the hole that uh, allows the fluid to get to the reservoir. This is a parts comparison between the, the Delco Moraine and Bendix master cylinders and how they relate. You start with the plungers um, and how they seal the cylinder portion of the master from the reservoir. Bendix, we have the compensating valve. Moraine has holes in the end of the plunger that get sealed off by the, the, the primary seal, which has this retainer. Next, they ride through a bearing slash uh, retainer uh, that stabilizes how the plunger moves within. Uh, Bendix just has this, while the Moraine has this washer that sits against the primary seal, then this this is the bearing here, and another um, spacer ring. Next you have the, this is what seals the, the fluid inside the master cylinder itself. 
Um, this is the only one of this type on the Bendix. Uh, this is called the secondary seal on the Moraine, and then this O-ring um, works with the end plug, and the end plug contains all these on the Moraine unit. Then next we have washers. Then next the uh, on the Bendix, the snap ring retains all of this inside the master cylinder, whereas the end plug on the Moraine retains all of this stuff in the, in the Moraine. And then finally we have the vacuum seal. Um, on the Bendix, this was originally leather. Uh, we use this type of seal today, or on this particular kit that I got from this. Um, on the Moraine, it's got another rubber seal with the retaining ring, and the original retaining ring was missing. So uh, I made one with a, a hose clamp, which works very well. Um, and then finally, to seal the master from the booster, there's O-rings at the end. And this is how they sit inside the master cylinders. Um, the plungers move, the other parts stay stationary, um, except for the moving of the compensating valve. Um, they apply this direction and release that direction. Snap ring on the Bendix goes about there, and the end plug for the Moraine is here. The manual says when assembling these in some cases to dip the parts in clean brake fluid. However, since these units are not going to be used for a while, I don't want to have brake fluid in them absorbing moisture and corroding, so I'm just going to use some brake grease to protect the parts. I already put the compensating valve back in on the, on the Bendix, so I'm going to install the primary seal retainer in the Delco Marine and the primary seal. On the Bendix, we put the plunger in and we'll tilt it to get it past the compensating valve. Next, the bearings of the Delco. It's the blue washer. helps retain once with seals on it it will help it be you know move straight and not, not wobble around on the moraine unit um, this has a this on the secondary seal it's got a retaining cage thingy that my other unit doesn't have that instead it has um, little ridges in the inside the seal like this is the vacuum seal but the secondary seal on on the other unit has those instead of this thing um, and the manual doesn't talk about this so I'm gonna put this in there now so now that's in there the retaining ring will sit in there um, just like it would be sitting against the ridges in the other style we have to do the next steps in a different order since a lot of the parts fit inside the end plug so, for example, in the Moraine, the vacuum seal has to go into the um, end plug first rather than uh, afterwards on the Bendix.
vacuum seals in the in plug and then I put the retaining ring my uh, makeshift retaining ring uh, followed by a steel washer and then next up will be the secondary seal secondary seal is now in the end plug and the retaining ring will sit there and this is just to be um, makes it a little bit easier to probably easier to sit this on the bearing I thread the end plug on next up on the bendix is the the cup seal which is basically the analogous to the secondary seal in the ringing unit. And that'll go in there and sit over the retainer slash bearing. You have to work the lip of the seal past the loop, the groove where the um, snap ring is going to sit. Next up will be the washers, the calls this a guide washer, it goes, goes next. Followed by the corresponding steel washer. They get worked in and then the snap ring. See now that the washers are in, and the groove is right there for the snap ring. Back over to the moraine unit, we're going to put the two O-rings on the end plug. Next is to thread the end plug into the master. This first seal seals the seals the master and this other the second seal will seal when it when it's fitted to the booster and this is where the special tool is used to tighten it down just with a ratchet Now the snap rings in place, just put the, the vacuum seal over the plunger. And then finally fit the o-ring into the groove. The Bendix will need its covers installed. Front cover and its o-ring quarter inch socket. And then the top cover has four screws and a gasket. Gasket. Then, then we have our fill plug and gasket, although I'm one gasket short, so my Delco is not going to have one for now. And finally the bleeder screws, which are one of the few components that are the same. So there you have it, both master cylinders are rebuilt. Um, I didn't tighten everything down and when it's time to actually use them, just reassemble without you know, doing it with the fluid instead of the, the grease. But this is just to protect them for now. To reattach the Bendix master to the brake booster canister, you need this gasket. It's in good shape, so I'm reusing it, putting it on in the same orientation from where it was before. And you can tell by the marks based on that groove there and the O-ring, which direction it was. And then we want to be sure we orient it so that the front of the master is lined up with where the air cleaner goes. 
can just slide the plunger down through the hole and line up the holes. Adjust it a little bit. Just put the screws in. We'll get the three screws and put them in the other side. And put the three screws in. And tighten them down. I take a 7 16 socket. Delco Moraine is similar. Make sure you orient the master so that it lines up with the uh, air clearing mount on the canister. I don't happen to have a gasket so I'm just going to put it on as it is but when I do it for real I'll either get a gasket or use RTV sealant and try to get a gasket. Now the master is attached and we got the three screws and remember the plunger doesn't really belong in there now. Next thing for Bendix is to put the spring in with its, here's the spring, with its containing plate and C clamp or C whatever retainer. You can see the mark down there from basically where the spring was sitting before, so I'll set it like that. So it's just a matter of pressing it down, putting the hole in the center of the retainer far down enough so that the C can be slid into the into the to the groove here in the plunger. So I have spring in there and this hook at the end over the plate, and it's just Push it down and retain it with the seat. And there it is. And when I released, it pulled the plunger out to its normal release position. And I pulled the cover off to see that the compensating valve is held open as it should be. Pressing in on the plunger. And letting go. Booster parts won't be nearly so easy to illustrate in a layout as the masters were. Uh, this is the Bendix. Uh, here we have the the poppets and the plunger. Not the plunger, though. Yeah, I guess it's a plunger. This is the the push rod to push in the power brake, as opposed to the plunger to push in the the uh, master cylinder. Um, with the poppets, that mechanism. And got the diaphragm that's what gives you the pushback on the pedal so you feel the effort um, hose and the makeshift bumper or whatever they want to call it um, this is where the piston leather goes leather and wick and the retainer we'll look at some of these comparisons later um, This is the bottom and top of the piston with their respective screws. Anyway, this will be a lot easier to illustrate in components than it is uh, as one big layout, partly because my understanding is, is pretty limited. So this is where the vacuum hose attaches um, there as well. It's where it ultimately goes in. That's where the pipe attaches that the hose attaches to. Vacuum and airflow are controlled by the by the poppets. Uh, the atmospheric poppet allows air in or doesn't, and the vacuum poppet allows vacuum in or doesn't. And these holes here are where the air gets from one side of the piston to the other. The uh, leather seal is below. It's right here. It sits right here. I'm going to reassemble the, the plunger with the poppets because that'll make the illustrations a lot easier. First, we put this on. And then this guy goes on next. And then we just need the snap ring to hold it together. Snap ring's on, and I put the rubber back on. Now, this will slide into 
the bottom uh, piston plate. So there, that's the vacuum poppet. Now we're going to add the atmospheric poppet. The atmospheric poppet goes in from the bottom. Atmospheric poppet up from under here through that hole and then the stem through that hole. But we have to put the spring on it first. And that's the spring there. So the poppet and spring are under there and then we just need to put this little clip to retain it. So with the brakes fully released you can see the atmospheric poppet is open. The vacuum poppet will stay closed. As I apply the brakes you can see the atmospheric poppet open. Open while it's released and then close when it's applied. On the other end see the the arm operates the, the poppets so that's very easy to see on the Bendix we also have this J spring that we'll hold down with a screw that'll make it even more like it should be so the, the J spring makes the default be the release position. So apply and the vacuum pop it opens. Over here the vacuum or the atmospheric pop it is open but now we pull it closed. Not really ready to put this on yet but once it's together you can see with the leather seal here the poppets control whether air comes through here whether atmosphere being allowed through to fill the upper chamber or vacuum to draw air out of the upper chamber. When you look at the Delco Moraine parts, it seems like it's less parts. It probably is. Uh, a lot of things are integral with this. Like, for example, the vacuum pipe isn't screwed on. It's just part of it. Uh, the diaphragm assembly is much smaller. Although it's not just one thing, we have to put it together. And we'll do that first because that will help illustrate how the how vacuum and atmosphere are controlled. It's actually control, called the floating control valve assembly in the diaphragm is, is part of that. Floating valve goes through the diaphragm. And then this retainer plate sits on the back of the diaphragm like this with this little lip up. And then we have the retainer ring which goes up under the lip of the, of the diaphragm. And we have this retainer that goes on there on the floating control valve. And it operates like that. And the brakes are applied and released. I used a little brake grease to hopefully keep it in place while we just press this into so you apply the brakes, it goes up and reassemble the Delco brain plunger to the reaction plate with the snap ring and the o-ring Put some grease on the o-ring and next up put these two together. There should be an o-ring out here. Uh, I don't happen to have one of those now so be assembling without it. The Delco Moraine air control isn't as easy to describe or to visualize as the Bendix. Um, air goes in through these five holes at the bottom. 
not the big one in the middle that's sealed off by the air valve. So air goes in those five and air travels to the vacuum chamber by these four holes. All the magic of how it controls which way the air goes, if any, occurs inside the piston. So these five holes, these five holes are the way atmosphere gets in. There's always air in here. And this will be covered over, but there's all, always be air in here. And the air control system controls whether air makes it from here through these holes, because these four holes lead to these four. And that's what leads to the, to the vacuum chamber. So whether air is allowed there or vacuum is allowed there, is controlled right here. This rubber ring which sits on the bottom of the floating control valve, um, when it's sitting here, it's blocking the vacuum. When it gets lifted up from there by the air valve, that's when vacuum is allowed to reach those four ports. Normally the air valve sits a little below this ring when that's the case, air is allowed through to these four ports. That rubber ring sits over these two rings here. This one and the one beside it. Normally when the brakes are released, the air valve is a little below that ring. When the brakes begin to be applied, it moves up. And at this point, the, both of those rings are touching the rubber ring, which is blocking both the vacuum and the atmosphere. The brakes are further applied, the vacuum is opened up. And as you stop adding to it, but just hold it, the air valve is pushed back to an even level and both are blocked off. And then when you're releasing, the air valve goes back and air is allowed in. So either vacuum or atmosphere are allowed, but not both, and sometimes neither. Here it is again with the rubber ring on. Air valve is completely, brakes are completely released so air is allowed through. And at this point, air and vacuum, or atmosphere and vacuum are both blocked. And now vacuum is allowed. Holding neither, re released atmosphere. And that's basically how it works. Released, applied, holding, released. Applied, holding, released. Holding is able to work the way it does because of the spring. So you apply the brakes, but then you stop pushing it. The spring pushes this back down. But your foot is on the other end, so they get an equilibrium. It's the rubber diaphragm that does the blocking of the atmosphere. and only allows it to come in this way. And then the rubber ring below controls, as shown before. So released, applied, holding, released, applied, holding, released. With the floating control valve fully reassembled, released, 
apply applied holding released applied holding released pretty simple just hard to it was hard for me to visualize anyway until I really looked at it normally the next thing to be installed is the the leather seal around the outside um, but to illustrate what goes on in here I'm going to put the springs and the reaction levers in so with the springs and the reaction plates in place we can illustrate how this works so what happens is and what you can do without do without the front plate for now just to make it easier to see uh, the reaction plate these are compressed down so this is how it sits so it's trying to come apart the main purpose of this system is so that some force is pushed back to the pedal so you know when you're pushing the brake it's not too easy to push and it's designed so that you put 35% of the effort in and the booster gives you the other 65% of the effort. Now the Bendix has a very different reaction system than the Delco Moraine. So the Delco Moraine parts are on the right and the Bendix parts are on the left. This functions like the spring at the end of the air valve in the Delco Moraine. So it's pushing back you apply the brakes and then you hold or release this pushes back um, the diaphragm which is much much bigger than the one on the Delco Moraine um, also seals off the area where the airflow is occurring from the upper part of the inside of the, the piston so the diaphragm sits here there's a spring between that's it's not in there now but it sits here so that when the upper plate is put on you don't get air and vacuum coming out you want it only to be coming through the, the holes that are designed for that you may have noticed an extra hole in the bottom plate the diaphragm and the gasket this is to allow atmosphere to reach the area above the diaphragm and below the top plate. The large spring will sit like this. The shot manual is very confusing. It makes it appear as if you want it like this, but you definitely don't want that. Um, I think there's some errors in how they updated from 56 to 58 in the manual. There may be errors in both manuals. I'm still a little fuzzy on what exactly happened when I looked up the pictures in the 1964 parts manual the it was clear that this the spring needed to fit in this metal part but what was shown there had this ring a little farther out so there it may have made sense for the spring to be like this but we don't want that so we'll go this direction so like this inside and then this on top of it the verbiage isn't consistent with the picture in the 56 shop manual. The 64 parts manual doesn't have a separate diagram for 58 Bendix, so it is possible it is actually showing the 58 part, and then I have one from 56. The part numbers are different, so either is possible. If I do indeed have a 58 part, then both manuals have errors. You can see that they flip the spring in the diagrams between 56 and 58 shop manuals, though both manuals tell you to put the small end against the lower piston plate. So here it is with the spring and the diaphragm assembly. There will also be a gasket that fits around there. The manual tells you about some guide pins that can be used to help install. Um, I found it easy to just use drill bits where you line, put drill bits between through the holes on a couple of spots and then put a couple of screws in and then you can take the, the pins out and put the remaining screws in. In addition to drill bits, you can use uh, the compensating stem as a guide pin. I use these three. And then I put screws through the other two holes. And then underneath 
the it stiff the screws are placed through the holes in the first in a gasket and then in the diaphragm assembly and you can see here the two screws through the gasket and diaphragm assembly normally the gaskets wouldn't be there because well there wouldn't be a gasket there because it's um, put above the diaphragm assembly because of the extra gaskets I'm putting them right there and got those first two screws started it took a little bit of fighting to line it up properly with the holes so now for the remaining three I did the compensating pin first because it's the smallest and might have the most uh, the hole might be off center more than the other so I wanted it done first because it'd be easier to adjust and once they're all started just uh, tighten them down and you can see the warpage here and now with the reaction plate or the reaction mechanism in there you can see the atmospheric poppet sits wide open in the released format or in the release position just push it a little bit it closes push it further the vacuum pop it will open but you can't see that from here actually if you look carefully inside this hole you can see a little just a little bit of the vacuum pop it and as you push in it opens so beginning with push the atmospheric pop it closes and then vacuum pop it opens all right, next up for both is the leather seal plus the wick and the retainer. So with the bendix, you just stick the piston leather here. Make sure I center it properly. And next goes this plate with uh, this raised area upward. It just sits right in there. Next up's the retainer. It's just gonna loop over and hook on the inside on a hook from near the other end. And here you can see what here you can see where it's hooked on, and then it'll just go in, go inside the wick. And then this plate with the lip up. gets held on by six screws. So that's the Bendix piston with all but the few remaining lower components installed. We're going to move over to the Delco Moraine and uh, finally get the reaction stuff put in like we've been looking at. The Delco Moraine retainers like this and it's this piece where my middle finger is rubbing that goes inside the groove and or into the to the back wall of the groove and these other parts of the teeth against the upper part and then the teeth come off the outside with the, with the wick inside you just wrap it around the piston So there's the wick in there. Again, we would, if it were dried out, cleaned and dried, we would dip it in new fluid, still soaked in fluid. So um, just gonna turn it the right direction and put it in the groove. Just remembered or realized that uh, much easier to do with this base of the piston upside down. Then once it's in there, you just lower it into the leather. And then flip it back to right side up and start building the reaction stuff. We got the smaller spring in there.
with whatever what you call this on top. It's larger spring on the outside in that groove. And then the six reaction plates. You know, the reaction levers, not plates, reaction levers. The reaction plate is the center. This ring here is the reaction plate. Reaction levers. And the next thing to do is to line the holes up properly, push down, and push down fully. And while holding it down, get two of the screws started, two opposite end screws started. Actually, some often will start three of them. And then you can let go and, and tighten the, the, all four screws. You have to make sure the all the holes line up properly when it goes one way. You've got your four, four holes for the air, and then you've got your four holes for the screws. If you end up having to let up on it, the levers will probably lodge, dislodge and you'll have to pull it back up and, and realign them. That didn't happen this time. I got these two screws finger tightened. This one was a little bit troublesome, so I just left it until I got these done. So now I'll just add the fourth screw and tighten them down. So for a few bottom finishes, the Delco is ready to roll on the Bendix we still have a few things to put on like the pipe and the compensating stem. First it's going to be the compensating stem which goes in this hole here. I separated the compensating stem's diaphragm from the from the washer. It's uh, not supposed to be sealed to it so cleaned all that out so we can put it back together the right way. And the diaphragm goes right there. And then the washer back down on top. This piece of rubber is actually a diaphragm, which when vacuum is applied will be drawn downward, as shown here. The piston is upside down, so in reality it will be upward. It applies force to the compensating stem, which applies force to the vacuum poppet. This is to help the vacuum poppet open more smoothly when the brakes are applied. Next thing up will be to put the pipe on with its screw. There's a rubber base washer that's missing, so I cut out a rubber piece of rubber that uh, before I had put on with um, RTV seal, and I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to slip it on there since I'm not really using it. And then this boot goes down. I made sure I I uh, carefully worked it over this hex here, so I don't have to tear it. And then the rubber hose. The manual doesn't talk about any clamps, but I definitely needed clamps on my Delco. So clamps might be needed. You just have to be careful when you how you put them in there so they don't get in the way of the operation. To finish off the Delco Marine piston, there's a measurement that needs to be taken of uh, the distance, the difference between the distance to straight through the center to the bottom of the plunger and to the ring around that, which is part of that, um, part of the reaction mechanism. Um, there's a special tool for that. This is the J5805 depth measurement gauge. It has an inner shaft that slides in inside the outer shaft to measure. We start by putting four shims on the end of the tool that's opposite the end that has the rivet. Then we put the piston down over the tool and then flip the tool and piston together upside down so that we can see if the inner shaft is above, below, or flush with the outer shaft. Here the inner shaft is below the outer shaft so that means we have too many shims. With five shims it should guarantee that it's below and if it's not there's something wrong. Now with three shims the inner shaft and the outer shaft are flush, so that means we've got the correct number of shims. If we get down to no shims and the inner shaft is still below, then something's wrong. If something's wrong, the manual says to check for bent reaction levers or reaction plate.
These are the shims I found to be able to use with the air valve and with the J5805 tool. The uh, metal one on the left is a ten thousandths of an inch thick, which is what we want. However, the inside diameter is too small for the air valve, though it works on the tool. The fiber washer on the right is fifteen thousandths of an inch thick and will fit on the air valve. They are, these are five eighths of an inch outside diameter. The metal one is three eighths inside and the fiber one is seven sixteenths inside. If you don't have the tool, the manual does allow for using whatever number of shims were on there before, or you can try to measure the depths yourself and get the difference. And then this little chart here can uh, help you decide how many shims to use. Treat these numbers as approximate because these are just my measurements. When I measured this before, I determined that it needed three of the ten thousandths of an inch shims. Uh, I was only able to get fifteen thousandths, so that meant I used two instead. And then there's also the snubber type gasket. This is the snubber type gasket. It's the thin metal base with the rubber component on top of that. It's upside down in this picture. Um, it goes on after the shims and it's about one tenth of an inch thick. And I substituted, since it's missing from my Delco Marine unit, I substituted in more of the fiber shims. This turns out to be approximately like this. And also put the o-ring back on the air valve and now with the spring in the end ready to put it into the bottom of the piston and once it's in there add the washer to push in a little bit on it and the uh, triangular ring except in our case it's going to be the, the two snap rings Now with the snap rings in place, you can see how the push rod pushes in a little bit. First little bit is to close off the atmosphere and the second little bit is to open the vacuum. Vacuum hose, in this case with no clamp, but got to consider that for reality. Alright, to prepare to put the Bendix piston in, uh, you want to file down any raised edges on the screw holes so they don't damage the leather. The, the way you line it up is to insert the piston such that the hose will line up with the vacuum port for the pipes. So when the, the hose loops around it will come to about there there, whichever way it happens to go. And that's true of both units. Here's a comparison of the pipes. The uh, internal pipe for Delco Marine is bigger than the pipe for Bendix. Uh, on the outside, pipes are the same, so, which is necessary since they, they hook up the same way. They also go in opposite directions in, inside. I'm going to aim to install the Bendix piston approximately like this, with the hose lined up there. Um, that won't be able to be exact because these notches in the front plate, uh, the end of the spring is going to catch between two of those, so there's a limited set of configurations and if you get it wrong the first time you have to pull it out and shift it by one. This is the hydraulic oil that I use. I've got this from Cantor called shock fluid in the shop manual and that's what I went with because I wanted to make sure I got it right but I think it's pretty much any hydraulic oil of this type will work. So you want to lubricate the walls of the can of the canister and also if there's dry spots on the on the piston leather put a little bit on there so that it goes in easily without damaging anything. Once you get it in there you see the, the hose is lined up as desired so push it in a little farther and then be able to push the 
pipe in there and hook it up to the hose. And get the pipe on there with its gasket, of course, and get the, through, the screw started. Then you tighten down the screw and release the piston to come back up and it'll rest against the, the hose, which will prevent it from you know, coming out now that the pipe is in there. And now the piston is in there. Delco Marine is, is principally the same. However, the main difference being the spring isn't attached down there, so you have to, you've got, it's under a lot more pressure when you're holding it in, so be mindful of that. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of brake grease on the end of the plunger since it's not going into brake fluid, it's going into the seals will just have some grease on them. Um, but generally, you would have some brake fluid on it when installing it. So it's going to also you know, loop around with the hose to that port. The spring is in there with a the tab between the screw one of the screws and one of the indentations. All right, it's in there. Very slightly farther in than it should be. Um, short distance between the bottom of the piston and the hose and pipe. Uh, I haven't put the screws in this one yet, but I'll do that later. Back over to Bendix. Next up is the gasket and cover plate. Bendix again has these tabs, which I'm not going to fight with right now. Since this isn't going on a car anyway, I'll probably just put a couple of screws through to hold them on. Same with the Delco Marine. You have to make sure we line up the small holes with the two holes that are there for the screws. And with the bottom plate on, um, you can see the label there, Marine Product Division. GM Corp, Dayton, Ohio, USA. I'm going to try to find the correct countersunk screws instead of the ones that were in it. Um, remember the rubber bump, bumper is not there. It should be. And then it's just the boot with this uh, thing in there that absorbs oil, I guess. Just have to work this down over the uh, push rod. Um, it's damaged at this end anyway, so it won't be hard at all. You have to be careful when you have a, a good one. I thought the two boots might be the same, but this one seems a little small here to go around there on the Lorraine, so I'm not going to try to do that. Uh, it really came from the Bendix anyway. So, yes, it appears it's going to be easier with the uh, star-shaped pattern on the Bendix versus the round, bigger round one on the Moraine. And indeed it was. Last couple things on the Bendix is to put the air filter on and to put the rubber plug for the lubrication port. Put the foam back in. Put this rubber gasket on. Air cleaner's back on, and you can see it's got its patent numbers on it, which you can look up if you want to. And the rubber plug back in the lubrication port. And thread back on the, uh, whatever that piece is. And Delco Marine also has this piece put on, so... Both units are as back together as they're going to be, for the time being. These units are easy to bleed. You, uh, when you run your hose from the outlet into the reservoir, um, then you can just press down. And it's even easier with the Bendix because the the rod, the push rod, isn't particularly wobbly at the bottom. So you can just kind of stick it on a block of wood, or I could even do it on on this on this manual, and just push it down and in uh, to to bleed it. Delco Moraine push rod's a lot wobblier, so it's 
not nearly as easy to, to bleed standing up like this, not that you can't do it. You could do it either here or on the car, bleed the output, and then also the, the bleeder screw. Bleeding on the car is still really easy because you just reach down and uh, operate the push rod by hand. Piece of cake. 